So kind of moving a little bit forward and as to how we would, let's say, for example, we want to manage our XML data through a friendlier interface. And if we have something like a, 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 an XML file that's produced by a tool like Stack Crew. So we can go ahead and select our controller to none and assign a Stack Crew data controller. So we can navigate to sports and then select Stack Crew Stats 2, for example, and then navigate to basketball. And I'll go ahead and connect a home single player. From here, we'll then get a, a separate window generated as a third tab under layer properties. This was pretty much a, G, a, a graphic user interface. You'll see ahead of time that I've already done something with this controller on this session. But simply what you'll need to do is you'll need to browse for an XML file and then connect an XML file that is actually formatted for that particular sport. So for example, since I connected it to football, for example, we might see that I might get some misbehavior on certain components. If they're shared attributes, it might still just function fine. So for example, you'll see that I can, by assigning the player, and I can actually curate what stat labels I want represented here. So we can get something like the DREB, scroll down a little bit more and get the DQ here. And then we can send this offline for now and then select a different name. So we can put Anna there, send this information live. And then we can see that. So since I'm actually fetching from, so I'm using the basketball controller right here under football. So I might get some, um, so you always wanna make sure that for whatever template you're using. So let's say for example, for stack crew, I, I load in a data controller template for basketball. You want to make sure that the actual XML file that you're pointing to that data controller matches the sport. There are some instances where you might have some empty fields of information and it might look like something's not functioning. It just is a matter of fact of a certain stat not being accrued for that particular stat for that particular player. So there might be some instances where you wanna double check your actual XML file to see that all the actual fields that you want to use for your production and for your graphics are being retrieved or are being generated from the tool that's producing that XML file. Hey Joe, I got a question from Jordan. <clears throat> yeah, um, I don't think I'm, Maybe I'm not understanding the question. Maybe you can help clarify. Uh, he asked, what are the differences in display in terms of which data controller you input the info with? So display as in, so let me see if I can. Can you read that one for me one more time? Yeah, what are the differences in display in terms of which data controller you input the info with? I think we might require a little more info, a little more clarification yeah, on that, Jordan. Can, because we totally qualify that statement a little, or that question a little bit more. Yeah, it sounds like we don't know if you're... What's the last name? Um, McAlpine. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and clarify in chat. We'll get around to it when we get a chance. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it's, it's, it's working up to be a pretty good question though. So those are, there's different ways of managing all this information and alternative routes of using the same file in different ways. Something like Stack Crew, if you have a, that, that client producing XML files for you, I would probably suggest to just use the Stack Crew data controllers since they're already conformed to read the different formats that a Stack Crew file could possibly be when it comes to XML. If you don't have something like Stack Crew stats and are just getting raw XML data, that's you know, not being filtered through a specific format, for example, like TurboSport, um, that wouldn't work with Stat Crew since it's not formatted in the way that Stat Crew, um, you know, does, uses its syntax. So you would have to use the XML reader. Luckily, with something like the XML reader, any changes that are being done to an XML file, like let's say, for example, the the um, the server is constantly updating this XML file, then it would be considered a live XML all those updates happening to certain scoreboard data or even player statistics would, would, would update while live. The same way you're seeing me update this score bug with this different multi-entry data. You'll see all these values update with their set of animation and corresponding elements. Now kind of moving forward onto these score bugs themselves. So kind of to look at the different data controllers that we offer for score bugs is if we look under the sports category, we have something like new tech data link. These are different depending on how you're set up and what kind of solution you're using. Certain one of these, uh, a specific controller will be, will be the one that you want to use for your scenario. And a lot, and all most of these solutions will be used for driving score bug data directly onto a graphic. 
If we look at our scoreboard tool, that is our in-software solution that pretty much it works via HTML that produces a data controller that has different uh, graphical user interface buttons to interact with. And you'll see in a moment that I actually have one of these graphics set up to interact with that. We'll see that I have something from Stretchcast and the scoreboard tool too. Just like I mentioned, like with Vividcast, if you have Stretchcast also installed that we've offered through Presto, you'll also share some of those data controllers as well. We can then navigate that. So Sportscast, which is what I'm currently using right now, pretty much what you need is one of the, uh, one of the two or both. What I'm doing right now is connecting a score bot directly to a Dactronics board. I pretty, we pretty much set it up so that we use a specific um, template within the, within the score bot to be able to read what the Dactronics is sending. So you will probably have to look up a PDF that shows, for example, if you're set to a football game on your Dactronics board, you would have to configure your score link device or your score bot device to read that specific template so you can actually get a clean interpretation of that serial data so that our actual controller solution with entire live establishes a, a solid connection or a stable connection. Then navigating to the next one is pretty much stack cruise scoreboards. So pretty much using stack cruise scoreboards. One of the interesting things that I like about this particular workflow is for example, let's say whatever service you're, you're using like Stack Crew to produce XML data is only producing one XML sheet. However, this one XML, this one XML sheet includes all your game information like statistics and scoreboard information, all your player stats for both visitor and home and all your different lineup information. That will be hosted through one XML document, meaning that theoretically you can then you point one XML a document to your both your stack crew scoreboard controller and your stack crew stats controller so there's no need to manage different kinds of files and then see if you have the correct one and have the the incorrect one on a different graphic it's all just managed through one and just to kind of show you how that interface looks i'll go ahead and use this graphic as an example navigate to sports and use stack crew scoreboards and load in basketball we'll see a little interface load here if we browse for an XML, we can find this basketball one that I was using, and then we can save that. So we can see here that it generates an interface that we can, there's some elements we can interact with, but beyond that, all the other information that you see being sent here is all being updated while live from the actual data server that is hosting the XML. So there's only so little components you actually have to drive from here. And perhaps maybe the venue that is that is hosting that data is only hosting score and time, then the rest of the controls would have to be the, uh, manually operated by the person operating the data controller. Do note that things like that I mentioned, like the scoreboard tool and the stack crew controller can be open from browser. So if I click this open in browser here and I copy this, this uh, web link, I can either send this, send this web link to somebody that is also operating within the same local area network, or if I want to operate via the, the external browser, I can then do that here. And you can see pretty much the exact same interface that I had previously loaded. And it pretty much allows you to interact and send data updates to graphics without having to use Tatter Live itself. Do note that the actual session of Tatter Live does have to still be open in order for that external data controller to be able to communicate with your graphics.